Uh, my name's Mr Ravenscroft. I'm a teacher from Kingsdeck Academy, which is one of the partner schools of the Cabot Learning Federation, based in the southwest of England. Today I'm going to talk to you about something which is the most complicated in the universe, something that everyone has but many people know little about, and something that also takes up 20% of your body's energy, which is more than any other part of your body. I'm sure that many of you have worked out that I want to talk about the brain. The reason I want to give this talk is because really when you think about it, how you feel and learn is really just about how your brain works. And with that in mind, I've bought and read this book. It's written by a professor of brain science, Professor Jensen, and she wrote this book she wanted to better understand how her own teenage children learned and thought and then wanted to share that information with other people. I thought it was a great book. It really made me think about how the teenage brain works and I want to share some of those things with you today. The first thing I learned is that a teenager is not just a younger adult. And I think that's an easy mistake to make, because when you look at teenagers, they really look not that different to how people are going to look in their mid-twenties or even late-twenties. But they're really not the same, particularly in how their brain works. And maybe one way of understanding that is thinking about how most of your body really just gets bigger as you get older. So if you think about your hand, as you grow up, your hand just gets bigger. My son's hand is really just a small, acuter version of mine. But your brain gets bigger, but it also changes in structure and size. It's really not the same as it is when you're younger. It's not just larger. It's different. And maybe a way of understanding that is thinking about the difference between, let's say, a horse, which is when it's born and it grows up, it really just gets bigger. It just stays the same, it's just bigger. As opposed to, let's say, a frog. Because when a frog is born, it's a tadpole, it looks nothing like a frog. So it gets larger, but it also completely changes in structure. And at least when it comes to the teenage brain, it's much more like a horse than a frog. Now, there's two way, main ways in which the teenage brain is different to the adult one. One's a strength and one's a weakness. I'm going to start off by talking about the strength. The main strength of the teenage brain is it's better able to learn new things than the adult one. Teenagers form memories more quickly, they're stronger and last for longer. If you're going to have a competition between teenagers and adults in a memory test, teenagers win, hands down. Now that applies to all the subjects you learn. It applies to the building blocks of knowledge, like English and maths, as well as the humanities and the sciences. And maybe way at the moment you can think of your brain as a bit like a sponge that's able to absorb a huge amount of new information. Now, as you get older, you can always learn new things, but it's never going to be like it is now. Now, to understand why that's so important, you need to understand a bit about the, how the brain works, but also how it doesn't work. Now, it used to be thought your brain was a bit like a bucket. You can fill a bucket up with water, but it's not going to get bigger the more you use it. It's just going to stay the same. And really, to put it simply, we thought that people were either born thick or they were born clever, and there's nothing you could do about it. But the more we learn about brains and how they work, the more we realise that's not true, and your brain isn't like a bucket at all. And in fact, your brain is much more like a muscle, and then it gets stronger and changes depending on how you use it. Now, I'm going to talk about a couple of studies that show this. First one has to do with taxi drivers, London taxi drivers. Now, to become a London taxi driver, you've got to pass a test called the knowledge, where you've got to learn a huge amount about London, which is a large and complicated city. You've got to learn hundreds of routes through the city, and you've got to learn tens of thousands of places of public interest, as well as the names of streets and roads. It takes about three years to revise this test, and most people fail it. Only 30% get through. Put very simply, this is a difficult test. Now the study was interesting because what it did is it looked at the brains of taxi drivers before doing the test and then those that had passed it. And what it found was something quite fascinating. It found that the parts of the brain that has to do with remembering where things are in space physically grew in size. It got larger. Now I think this is an amazing discovery because we all know that if you go to the gym or if you play sports regularly, your body will respond. Your muscles will become stronger and bigger because of the activity that you do. But the same also applies to your brain. Another study looked at the brains of professional string players. And these are people that spend you know, tens of thousands of hours becoming as brilliant as they are. And what they found is the brains of these people aren't quite the same as the rest of ours. Because the part of their brain that's got to do with the control of their fingers that touch the strings, again, is bigger and more powerful than the rest of ours. Their, their brain is growing and becoming more powerful in response to what they're doing. Well, you might well be thinking, so what? Well, the reason this is so important is what you do between now and when you leave school will determine the brain you have as an adult and how clever you are. And here they've done really interesting studies. They've looked at people at the age of 13 and measured their intelligence, and then looked at those, those same people a few years later when they're 17 to see how bright they are. And what they found is there were three quite clear groups. There were those people that were the same. They didn't really change at all in, those, in that time. There were people that quite worryingly got less clever, there's also a third group who got much more clever over that time. And that would be a bit like a pupil arriving at the age of 13 who's nothing amazing, he's all right, 
But a few years later, he's progressed and he's overtaken many of those people that previously used to be cleverer than him, and he's actually doing really well. I bet you're now thinking, yeah, but how? And here I'm going to tell you things that are no surprise to you at all. Well, the first thing is, is that you need to work hard. Now, people don't remember things just because they want to, and they certainly don't remember things just because they're important. You simply remember things that you think a lot about. So in class, you need to be concentrating. When the teacher's talking, you need to be listening. When they give out the work, you need to get on with it. And you need to do your homework to the best of your ability. It's also really important that you read. I think reading is so important, it should be seen by you as your second education. Now, your first education is what you learn in the classroom. It's what the teacher teaches you. It's the exams you're given. It's the qualifications you get at the end of it. But your second education is the reading you do outside school that gives you access to information that simply makes you smarter. Now, I would go so far as to say that if you do well at school, you pass your GCSEs, you go on to your A-levels, you go to university, you even get a degree, but you never read outside your subject, I would argue that you're only kind of half educated. It's a really interesting study that's been done on the effect of reading of pe people's progress. When you look at pupils at secondary school, why is it that some make really good progress while others don't? And a lot of that is explained by the fact that during the holidays in particular, pupils, some pupils read while others don't. So if you imagine at the end of the, the holiday, you haven't read anything at all, you've actually gone back in your intelligence and understanding. But if you carried on reading during the holiday, you'd have carried on progressing. So that is another reason why reading is so important. You also need to make sure you get enough sleep. You need to get about nine hours of sleep, but most of you are getting around seven. Now, sleep's really important for your learning, partly because you need to be fresh in order to concentrate and work hard during the day. But sleep also plays a really important role in moving things from your short-term memory, which is what you've learned during the day, to your long-term memory, which means you'll remember it later. So if you're working really hard at school to learn things and you're not getting enough sleep, you're just wasting lots of things you've, you've learned because you're not giving your brain a chance to put it into your long-term memory. Finally, you need to avoid taking drugs. Now, I don't want to lecture about this. All I'm going to say is that drugs do real damage to your brain. Um, that applies to everyone's brain, but particularly as teenagers, as your brain's developing, you're particularly vulnerable to the damage done by drugs, including t tobacco and alcohol. Now, smoking cannabis um, has been shown to reduce people's IQ into adulthood. Also, drinking alcohol excessively can reduce your performance in tests, often by, as people calculate by as much as 10%, which could easily be the difference between a pass and a fail. Um, worryingly, there's more evidence that actually smoking cigarettes, tobacco, um, is linked to mental health problems and depression, as well as reduced IQ. So, again, you need to stay away from that. The other thing you need to understand is that there's only a short amount of time you've got to develop your adult brain as a teenager. Being a teenager really is once in a lifetime opportunity. It's something you can't make up later on. Maybe one way of understanding this is thinking about a situation where you're, let's say, walking along and you come across a tree just full of money. Lovely. And you think to yourself, I'm going to take this money down from the tree, but you know that very soon the wind is going to come and blow it all away. I'm sure you do your best to get all that money out of the tree and into your pockets. Now, we're not talking now about trees and money, are we? I realise that. We're talking about something much more important. We're talking about you building the brain you're going to be relying on for the rest of your lives. OK, so I've talked about the strength of the teenage brain, its ability to learn, but I'm now going to talk about the weakness of the teenage brain. And to understand the weakness of the teenage brain, you need to know about something called the prefrontal cortex. The prefrontal cortex is the part of the brain that thinks about and plans the future. It's the part of the brain that asks, what if I did this? What if I did something else? It's the part of the brain that stops you doing what you want to do now to something more important that you need to do to get something better in the future. It's the part of the human brain that takes up 40% of its entire size, which is more than double the next closest animal, which is a chimpanzee. I think if aliens were to come down from space and they were going to ask themselves, well, why is it that humans have been able to you know, build pyramids, launch themselves into space and cure diseases, while other animals are still crawling around the trees? This is the part of the brain that they point to. I think it's the part of the brain that makes humans a very special animal. Now, while it's the most sophisticated part of the brain, it's also the part of the brain that develops latest. So your prefrontal cortex isn't fully de developed until you're well into your 20s. And what that means is that teenagers have a natural weakness about thinking about and planning for the future. I'm not going to pretend that all adults are great at this, because clearly we're not, but generally it's a strength of an adult brain and a weakness of the teenage brain. So I want to talk about a few examples about how the lack of teenagers thinking about and planning the future can result in consequences that they didn't really think about. So here's one. I knew a pupil a few years back who used to play on his mum's tablet in the evening, and when he was doing it, he used to buy pound credits. And when I spoke to his mum, she said that he'd run up £100 worth of debt, and she was absolutely furious with him. When I asked him, why'd you do this? His response was, I don't know, sir. And I think genuinely, 
He didn't know. He didn't think about it. All he did was what he wanted to at the time without thinking the consequence it would have for later on. Another example I'll talk about is a pupil who was playing at lunchtime and threw a tennis ball by accident over a spiky fence and thought he'd go and get it without really thinking about it. And as he went over it, he cut himself very badly, just missing a vital artery. Um, luckily, he was OK. The ambulance picked him up and he was all right. It was just scary and painful, but it could have very nearly been fatal. An example also I read about recently was a case of a girl who got carried away in the moment and sent a picture of herself naked to her boyfriend without thinking what would happen if those photographs got out. And those photographs did get out. And when they got out, not only was she humiliated and embarrassed in front of all her friends, which is terrible, but I would say more importantly, later on in life, she'd have, have a criminal record, which means that she won't be able to do jobs that she might well want to. OK, finally, I want to talk about a pupil I knew at my last school called Jacob Woodstra. Um, I didn't know him that well. I took a, cover, a couple of cover lessons with him in. Um, but he seemed like a good guy, and uh, he was very popular at school with the pupils and certainly with all the, all the teachers. Um, unfortunately, one of his friends was involved in a dispute with a sort of small-time drugs dealer over some money. And Jacob thought he'd get involved in this um, without really thinking through the consequence of it. Um, particularly if it went wrong, and it did go wrong, it went badly wrong. The guy pulled out a knife and stabbed him in the chest, and he bled to death. And this is what his father said. The best son... I could ever wish for. I think that's an example of doing something and not really thinking through the consequences for it and then paying the ultimate price for it. Okay, so I've told you you've got a weakness in thinking about and planning for the future. But on its own, that's not really very useful, is it? It's just kind of an insult. What you want to know is what you can do about it. Now, remember, it's not that you can't think about and plan for the future. It's this that it doesn't come so easily. So the advice on this is really quite simple. Work out the consequence of what you're doing and think, is it worth it? Particularly think, is it worth it if it goes wrong? I think put simply, think twice. OK, so what have we learned? We've learned that your brain is like a muscle. The more you use it, the stronger and more powerful it gets. We've learned that what you do between now and the age of 17 will determine the brain you've got as an adult. And we also know what you can do to build your brain and become as intelligent as possible. We know that you need to work hard. We need to know that you read, particularly during the holidays. You need to make sure you get enough sleep, about nine hours. And you also need to make sure that you avoid taking drugs. You also got to be aware that this time you've got is a limited time. This is a limited window of opportunity. And as I said before, being a teenager, it's a once in a lifetime opportunity. You also need to know that as well as this great strength, you've got a weakness. And your weakness is you don't naturally think about and plan for the future. So before doing anything, just think twice. Thank you very much for listening. <laughs>